This is Beverly, and this video will demonstrate how I weave the tabletop tension trivet. As we go through this, you may wonder which is harder, making the trivet or saying the name. These useful and decorative trivets can have many uses. Over the years, I've seen them used as decorations, pads for placing hot pots, and ornaments. About 20 years ago, I made one in a class. Afterward, try as I might, I could not seem to duplicate it. Then, a few years ago, Ann Bowers taught me how to make a mini tension trivet ornament and provided my eureka moment. I have been making different versions of the trivet ever since. I have made ornaments as small as two and a half inches to much larger ones. I taught my husband how to make one that is 15 inches across. We made it into a clock. Whatever the size, the instructions are the same. You just vary the size of the reed and the number of pieces in the set of spokes. Some use different media, such as willow, to make them. For this video, we will weave the five and a half inch reed trivet. I have written a pattern and created graphics to help make many small, medium, and large trivets, ranging from two and a half to seven and a half inches in diameter. At the end of this video, I will give you instructions explaining how to request the pattern and graphics so I can send them to you via email. My email address will be posted there as well. So let's get started. First, here's what we'll need. About 35 feet of number four round reed, which we will use for the spokes and the weavers. We'll need a continuous run of about six feet of number five round reed for the ring. We'll use a reed gauge to tell the difference between the two because in recent years, reed has often been misgraded. Strong clamps will hold the spokes in place. A measuring tape to measure the length of our reed and basket shears to cut things. We will start by making the ring. This graphic will help us size everything as we get started. I've put it in a document protector to keep it from getting wet and to keep the ink from transferring from the paper to the reed. We'll begin by taking the number five round reed that has been soaking in water long enough to make it pliable. You can verify the size of the reed by using your gauge. Using the graphic as a guide, we place the reed on it to create about a three inch tail. Then we fashion the reed into a circle that is five and a half inches across and secure it with a clip or a clothespin on the top of the three inch tail. At this point, we are finished with the graphic. Next, we will circumnavigate this ring, wrapping the reed around itself four times. I bring it toward me and pull it through. There's one, and now two. I generally change hands at this point. Another wrap makes three. Wrap number four goes behind this tail and inside the ring. This will hold the ring together so we can now put the clip aside. That leaves us with a tail protruding from the underside. We now go around the ring one more time. This time, we're going to follow a natural track created by our previous wrap. See this little valley right through here? We'll take the reed and place it in that groove and follow it around the circle. It will wrap this circle four times. One, two, three, and the fourth wrap goes behind the tail, bringing it forward and it exits the groove, creating a second tail. One tail from behind and the other one from the front. The construction of this ring can be applied to many weaving projects. I use the same process to make this ring using number zero round reed. This type of ring becomes the handle and rim of these small rib baskets that I weave using Irish wax linen thread. Now let's get back to weaving our trivet. 
Rotate the ring to orient the intersection of the tails to our 9 o'clock position, or the left side. Next, we'll lay our spokes into position. I've cut 12 7 inch spokes made out of number 4 reed. Again, you can double check the size of the reed using your reed gauge. The spokes and weavers need to be from reed smaller than the reed that's being used for the ring. We lay four of these spokes on the ring about one third of the way across the diameter. Clamp the top intersection with one of your clamps. The clamp needs to be strong and wide enough to hold all four strips of reed in place. I like the clamp to be oriented to the outside of the circle. Now we do the same at the bottom. This becomes your first spoke. Now we can do the same on the other side. Lay four pieces of reed across the circle about one third of the way in, clamping it into place at top and bottom. These clamps stabilize your spokes as you weave. Don't forget to maintain your tail intersection at your nine o'clock position. That will be important later because your weavers will cover where the tails are cut off. I've got four seven inch strips of reed remaining. So I'll use these to start weaving. Starting on the left, we go under the ring, over the spoke on that side. Then we'll release the clamp on the spokes on the right side, weaving under those and then over the outer ring and put the clamp back in place. That leaves us with a typical weaving pattern of under, over, under, over. Grab the second weaver and we'll start from the side where we just ended. Since the first weaver ended on top of our ring, we'll start this one underneath. Then, working to the opposite side, we'll go over the first spoke, unclamp the second spoke, and weave underneath it, and then end up on top of the ring on the other side. We still need the clamps to hold the spokes in place. The next weaver starts out on our left under the ring. Then we go over the left spoke, release the clamp, go under the next spoke, and then we end up on top of the ring on the right side. Replace the clamp. You can likely see we are filling the circle from the center out and we will work our way out to the outer edges of the ring. So as we put the last weaver in place, we reverse the pattern next to it. We go under the ring, over the first spoke, under the second, and over the ring on the opposite side. We can now remove the clamps since the tension of the weavers is now strong enough to hold itself together. We'll also remove some of the excess of this long tail so it'll make our work a little bit easier. We are not yet ready to trim those tails to their final lengths. As we continue to weave to the outer edges of the trivet, there are several ways that we can do this. One way is to cut 40 to 50 of these seven inch weavers and continue as we have been doing, working out from the center. The second method, one that I like to use, is to take a long strip of number four reed and weave it into the trivet, cutting the weavers as we go. Let me show you how I do that. We'll need to make sure the reed is wet and pliable. I use a hot soaking bath, about 110 degrees, so it works really fast. Once ready, we'll do as we have been, first weaving one end in place under the ring and then over, under, over. and cut. I like to keep my reed in my right hand, so I turn the trivet 180 degrees. The last row started over the ring, so we'll start this one under. Then we go over the spoke, under the second, and over the outer ring, and cut. Next, we go to the bottom and repeat our weaving. Under, over, under, over, and cut. You can keep doing it this way if you like, but I found the next way even faster. We can weave both ends at the same time. Now let me show you how I do that. 
I'll turn the trivet to keep things oriented to my right, since I'm right-handed. We are using both ends of the same long piece of reed. Taking one end, we repeat the weave on the lower side of the trivet, under, over, under, over. Then I go to the top side and begin under the ring, over the spoke, under the second, and over the ring. Then we cut both weavers at once. Don't worry about how ragged the ends look right now. We're going to trim those as we finish the trivet. Turn the trivet 180 degrees again, starting under the ring with both ends of the weaver, over, under, over, cut. We'll continue weaving back and forth until we get all the way to the outer edges of the ring. Along the way, you'll notice that the circular ring starts to become an egg-shaped oval. Just push those outer edges toward the center tightening up the weavers to keep the circular shape. When you get to the end, you'll have more space here. Also, I like to push my spokes and bow them inward just a little. I like the look it provides on the finished trivet, but it also provides a little more weaving room when we get to the outer edges. With about 20 weavers in place, we are now ready to cut those tails off. The weavers are holding the ends of the ring in place. Lift the weavers up, use your scissors to cut a tail toward the inside at an angle under the weavers so that they mask the end just a bit. Rotate the trivet, cut the other tail as close as possible to the circle, and then continue to weave. I insert both ends of the weaver underneath, weave over, under, over, and then cut. Rotate and repeat. If you run out of number four reed, soak another length and keep going. You keep filling in the gaps until there's no more room to weave. You may notice the colors vary between the freshly wet reed and the dry ones. As they dry, the color will match. These trivets are easy and fast to make, and they make a really good way to use some of that round reed you have sitting around in your stash. At this point, make sure your shaping is good. Next, we will trim the excess off the weavers and the spokes. I usually start with the spokes, using the ring as a guide. If I cut all four adjacent spokes at the same time, they should end up even. When we get to the weavers, you wanna take care to make sure they stay as close to the outer edge of the ring as possible but don't cut them so short they slip inside the ring either. I do this by keeping my scissors aligned with the outer edge. I also try to cut several at the same time to keep them as even as possible. I keep the bottom of my shears aligned to the outside of the ring. When I flip it over, I do the same to the underside. I do warn against trying to shape it after you finished the trimming process. Invariably, the weavers will end up too short and fall out. When that's done, you now have a tabletop tension trivet. If you'd like a copy of the pattern and graphics I've referenced in this video, please send me an email at the address on the screen, and I'll be glad to share it with you and I'd be interested in seeing your trivets, especially if you find different uses for them or find a way to customize this project in a new way. I enjoy sharing as well as learning from others.